In the opening scene, we are introduced to Prince Duncan, whom the story is all about. Prince Duncan is the heir of the European Kingdom of Belmont. Meanwhile, in America, we see Emma, who is running her late father's diner. She is a believer of fairy tales. The beautiful decorations imply that Christmas is fast approaching. We also see women gathered around and singing Christmas songs. Emma is on her way to meet her boyfriend, Todd, a car salesman. She sees the singing women and is thrilled, wishing she could join them. However, she can't keep Todd waiting, so she hurries to meet her date. On the dinner date with Todd, she reveals that their relationship is not working and she wants to break up with him. Todd is surprised because he believes their relationship is working just fine, and he even plans to take it to the next step. This does not change how Emma feels about their relationship. She loves exploring and visiting new places, while Todd isn't that kind of person. Todd wants her to reconsider. He reminds her that exploring will not be able to take care of her little sister Alice. He knows she's not financially capable of doing that. He wants her to stop dreaming and see him as the perfect man. But Emma's not willing to go back on her words. Believing she will reconsider, he tells her to reach out to him once she has come back to the real world. Believing that time will be on his side, he leaves her to think about it. For a brief moment, it seems like Emma is going to have a change of heart. Unfortunately, she cannot do that since Todd is already leaving, angrily. In the next scene, we see two men practicing their sword skills. One of the men happens to be Prince Duncan and another man is his trusted confidant, trainer, and friend named Jeffrey. As they practice, Jeffrey notices the prince is disturbed because of the way he fights angrily. The prince reveals he's not happy because, in a few days, he will be getting married to a stranger. Jeffrey is surprised, stating that arranged marriage is old-fashioned. The prince reveals he is not in love with the lady in question, even though she's beautiful and sweet. Jeffrey tries to encourage him and suggests he follow his heart and ignore tradition. The prince agrees and plans to do as he suggests. Back to Emma, after her date, she meets Alice, who wants to know how her date went. Emma describes how Todd reacted to their breakup. Alice is surprised and believes he overreacted. However, she supports her sister's decision to break up, and hopes she will meet a better person. Back to the prince. We see him eating with his parents, the king and queen of the European Kingdom of Belmont. The queen can't wait for her son to be married. She goes through the newspaper article about his wedding and shares her idea on how to go about it. She notices the prince is not contributing, making her think he's unhappy. She wants to know why he is not thrilled with the talk of his marriage. Prince Duncan sees this as a perfect opportunity to reveal his intentions. He wants the wedding to be called off. His parents are taken aback. His mother does not approve his request because the wedding is expected to be the most spectacular Christmas wedding the country will ever experience. However, the prince wants them to reconsider, because he's not in love with his bride-to-be. He adds that he believes his parents are married because they love each other. His parents admit to it and remember their good memories together as unmarried couples. The prince wishes to be in love too, but his mother declines, insisting the wedding will not be called off. To her, there's a lot more at stake than his feelings. So, she leaves angrily. Meanwhile, the king understands how he feels. So, he asks if his change of mind is because he is in love with another woman. The prince confesses that there's no woman yet, even though he has come in contact with different women. There have not been any romantic feelings for any of them. The king encourages him to keep searching because he believes he will find his heart's desires eventually. He appreciates his dad being understanding and goes to his room with his newspaper containing the article on his wedding. While in his room, the prince thinks of how to go about his quest for true love. While doing that, he sees an advertisement about Christmas in Aurora Town, which is in another country. He thinks the universe is speaking to him. He is presented with the perfect opportunity to get away from the arranged marriage the queen is insisting on. Later that night, the prince sneaks out of the house. Unbeknownst to him, Jeffrey sees him as he leaves the house. He believes he's making the right decision, so he allows him to go without raising an alarm. The prince successfully sneaks out of the palace and heads to the location on the ad. In the next scene, Emma and Alice are having breakfast. Alice has been saving up money and she suggests they get a Christmas tree, but Emma doesn't want to, because the celebration reminds her of their late parents. Alice encourages her to overcome her fears. She points out her parents lost their lives in a car accident, not because of Christmas. Emma is surprised at how her sister has grown to be mature. Back at the palace the next day, the king and queen are having breakfast. Jeffrey joins them to give them newspaper articles for the day. The king orders him to separate the sports section of the newspaper for Duncan, who loves sports. They wonder why the prince is 15 minutes late and has yet to join them. Jeffrey reveals he did not see him in his room that morning, and due to the absence of his suitcase, he reports the prince may have traveled to a place he's not aware of. His mother is livid because the wedding is in one week. Fortunately, the king calms her down. He reminds her that Duncan is an adult and needs time to sort things out. However, he wants Jeffrey to find out about his whereabouts and keep in touch with him. Meanwhile, Prince Duncan arrives at his destination safely. However, he is finding it difficult to navigate his way around, even though he's making use of the Google map. He thinks of a better way, which is to bring out his own map. However, he gets distracted while checking it, and almost gets into an accident by a roadblock. 
His car stops working. Later, the car gets towed. Unfortunately, the damage can't be fixed because it's a rental vehicle. The mechanic suggests Duncan use the train to get to his destination. While the mechanic goes to get his bill, the prince sees Emma and Alice from afar. He finds her very attractive, and so does Emma after seeing him. There seems to be an immediate connection. Alice approaches him to sell a Christmas bouquet. He does not want to buy it at first because he has no one to give it to. While the two are talking, Emma leaves for the diner. However, Alice persuades him to buy. Since he insists that there's no one to give it to, Alice, who has seen him staring at her sister, slyly suggests he buy it for Emma. He then orders two to be delivered on Christmas Eve. For documentation, the prince introduces himself as David. He decides to hide his true identity because he does not want special treatment. The mechanic later joins them and reveals the next train will be available the next day. The prince decides to spend the night in Aurora. Alice, seeing he is a stranger, assists him by suggesting the nearest diner to him. The diner she describes for him happens to be where Emma is. Meanwhile, the mechanic feels like Alice is trying to match two grown-up adults. He is worried because he is aware of Emma's relationship with Todd. But Alice assures him that they're no longer together. At the diner, Emma attends to their customers. Surprisingly, Todd shows up. One of her workers tries to get rid of him, but she insists she will do it herself. She approaches him, and he's delighted to see her. He wants her to reconsider their relationship, but she declines and wants him to leave. Todd strongly believes she will regret her actions because he feels he's everything she will ever want, and more. He gives her till Christmas Eve to think about it, and he leaves. After that, the prince shows up at the diner, and they bump into each other. He recognizes her and reminds her that they met earlier. She's surprised and she also remembers him. While Emma attends to their customers, one of the waitresses helps him with his order since he was finding hard it to choose. Emma gets him coffee and he introduces himself to her as David. She figures out he's new in town and envies him, because she believes he's traveling, which has always been her dream. However, when she discovers he plans to leave the next day, she expresses how she wishes he could stay longer. Then, Emma describes how to get a hotel in town. Later, the prince leaves for the hotel. When he gets there, the owner is very hospitable, so they get along quickly. He reveals his intentions to leave the next day, but she points out that the town has a way of making people stay. She then shares her story. She had planned to visit the town, but she ended up staying there, now married with two children. The prince believes the same will not happen to him. He mistakenly wants to use his credit card to pay for the room, forgetting that he's hiding his identity. When he remembers, he pays with cash instead. The woman believes his face looks familiar and she seems curious. Still, he tries to convince her she doesn't know him because he does not want to blow his cover. While this is going on, we see an unknown man standing outside his hotel room, monitoring his movement. Meanwhile, at Emma's house, Alice will not let her be. She wishes to know what she thinks of David. Emma does not want to get her hopes up, because he will be leaving the next day. She admits he's good-looking, and has a good accent. But she also feels like he's a stranger who might be hiding a secret. Since she is curious about him, Alice suggests she should just get to know him. Emma doesn't too, because she's scared of getting hurt. Still, her sister tries to encourage her to not give up on love. However, Emma thinks she's too young to lecture her on love issues. Still, Alice hopes she has a change of heart. After Alice leaves for her room, Emma goes through her mail and discovers she still has a lot of debt to pay. She also discovers that Alice has been given admission to a college and this somehow bothers her. In the next scene, the prince checks out of the hotel and the owner reveals that she's aware of his identity. He wants her to keep it a secret, and even offer her some money, but she declines. She simply wants him to remember her hotel, so that people can six because of him. He promises to do just that. Duncan leaves and checks his ticket. He hopes he is making the right decision by leaving the town. Meanwhile, the unknown man keeps following him. The prince visits the diner, and Alice is delighted to see him. He acknowledges she will be a good saleswoman. He gets his breakfast and a curious Alice wants to know when he plans to leave. The prince wonders where Emma is. He soon discovers that she doesn't like coming to work that day, because of a reason unknown to him. Later, he leaves for the train and sees Emma from afar at the cemetery. She brings flowers for her late parents. While at their grave, she complains about how hard she's worked to take care of Alice, and also seek their forgiveness for the decision she plans to take. After the prince approaches her, she's surprised to see him because she's aware of his plans to travel that same day. The prince wishes they get to know each other more before he travels, so he wants her to go on a walk with him. While walking, she talks about the town and how loving and hospitable the people are. As they discuss life and their old memories, she tells him her parents are no longer around. She also discovers that he has lived a boring life, so she decides to entertain him. She shows him how to make a snow angel and he finds it interesting. Later, the prince reveals how controlling his parents have been, and how he wishes to change things. He wants to be in control of his life and even take risks. Hearing this, she decides to take him to a place where he is allowed to take risks. Emma introduces him winter sport. The prince is nervous because it's his first time experiencing such a sport. 
They drive through the snow, and he falls off along the way. Emma shows concern, hoping he's not hurt. Luckily for him, he isn't hurt which makes Emma feel relieved. For the first time in his life, the prince feels normal. Duncan continue to enjoy her company. They eat cupcakes and he admits that Christmas is being celebrated in a better way in her town. However, Emma feels there's not much time to celebrate, because she has a lot of responsibility. She has aspirations of travel. However, since her parents are no longer around, she has to run her father's diner because she has no choice. After hearing this, the prince gets an urge to show her the world. All of a sudden, he hears the train leave and discovers he has missed his train. He realizes he can just get another ticket when he's ready to leave. For now, he wants to see her again the next day, and she's delighted by this. Later that day, Emma makes a difficult decision. She put the diner on sale, feeling like this will help them financially. Meanwhile, at his hotel, the prince keeps thinking about his time with Emma. He stares at their picture together, and the owner of the hotel sees him. She finds out he likes her and lets him know that Emma's parents lost their lives in a car accident during Christmas. She admits that Emma is remarkable, because she took care of her sister after the incident. She advises him to assist her in any way he can, if he's interested in her. Finally, the unknown man is revealed, it is Geoffrey. He receives a call from the king, unbeknownst to the queen. The king wants to know how the prince is getting along in a foreign land. Geoffrey reveals he is adjusting perfectly to life there. He also reveals the situation with Emma. Surprisingly, the king wants Geoffrey to leave him be, so Duncan can make his decision. The next day at the palace, the queen is bothered and blames herself for forcing Duncan to get married. The king tries to calm her down and believes their son still needs more time to think. He reminds her that he did the same thing before their marriage. He also reassures her that Prince Duncan will be fine and will eventually come home. At the diner, a guy delivers flowers to Emma. She discovers it's from Todd, reminding her to reconsider their breakup, and also their plan to meet on Christmas Eve for her positive response. She's surprised he doesn't want to give up. The prince arrives at the diner and offers to assist them. He has finally made up his mind to stay and she's glad. He suggests they introduce the customers to new dishes, so they can get more customers and make more cash. He believes doing so will stop her from selling the diner. Emma is delighted and hopes his new idea works out. In the next scene, Max, who's the diner chef, assists him in getting all the ingredients they need to prepare the new dishes. He lets Duncan know about his dream of becoming a certified chef by going to a culinary school. However, he needs to pass the entrance exams first. Furthermore, he feels like he will not be able to pass because there's nobody to back him up. Surprisingly, the prince offers to assist him. Later, the prince assists Max as promised and backs him up. Emma joins them and she's amazed at how generous he is. After helping Max, Emma wants them to play a game, so the prince leaves with her. However, while playing the pool game, Todd shows up and sees them together. He sees how happy Emma is with the prince. Todd, who is jealous, approaches them and demands that the prince stop hitting on her. Emma tries to stop him, but he refuses. Todd lies about them being engaged to be married, just to make the prince stay away from her. Emma denies being engaged to him, but Todd believes they will be engaged by Christmas Eve. The prince is fed up. He politely asks Todd to leave, but he refuses. They eventually end up fighting, but Todd gets beaten by the prince who is a skillful fighter. Hence, Todd has no choice but to leave them. Afterwards, Emma explains the situation to the prince letting him know Todd is her ex, and he can act crazy sometimes. She believes residing in a small town like Aurora will not give you plenty of options than to date whoever is available. She also feels like her dream about her prince charming finding her will not become a reality. The prince tries to encourage her because he believes fairy tales do come true, but insists that she has to be patient first. Emma thinks the prince does not understand how she feels, because he has it all. Although she doesn't know he is the prince, at least he can afford to travel around the world and go on adventures. Meanwhile, the prince wishes to exchange his current status for a normal life. He does not want her to give up on her dream. But she reminds him she has Alice's college fees to pay, her parents' mortgage to sort out, and a failing business to run. He realizes the weight of what she is going through. He then comes up with something and promises to pick her up the next day. In the next scene, Alice is curious about her relationship with the prince and believes it's going well. When she goes downstairs, she is surprised to see Emma setting up a Christmas tree. The situation makes Emma realize something. She is starting to resolve the trauma regarding her parents losing their life during Christmas. This might be brought on by the fact that Emma is happy because she is gradually falling in love with Prince Duncan. Alice hopes her happiness will last forever. Meanwhile, Prince Duncan thinks of a romantic way to surprise Emma, and the owner of the hotel gives him some ideas. Back to Alice and Emma, they continue to discuss the prince, and she lets her know what she likes about him. The prince on the other side also reveals to the hotel owner what he likes about Emma. All their positive qualities, ones that they don't see in themselves, are the reasons why they are attracted to each other. It seems like the prince has found her princess. Meanwhile, Alice is happy with the new Emma and wants her to enjoy every moment with the prince, even if it will just be for a while. 
Back at the hotel, Max visits the prince and appreciates him for assisting him with his exams. The results are out and he passed. His dream of going to culinary school has finally become a reality. The prince is glad and wants him to assist him in surprising Emma, something that Max is glad to help him with. In the next scene, Prince is at Emma's place to take her out on a date. Soon, Emma joins him, wearing a gorgeous dress. The prince admits she looks exceptionally beautiful. They leave for their date and she is surprised to see a horse carriage. He makes her feel like a princess. He is trying to bring the world she wishes to see right before her. Their date is a romantic one, and she's thrilled to see Max and Alice there too. Max is the chef, while Alex is the one who is playing the music. It feels like a dream come true for her. Meanwhile, Todd, who's curious about the prince's identity, visits his hotel. The receptionist is surprised the prince has a visitor. So while she tries to check if he's in his room, Todd, who's looking for what to use against him, checks around the hotel and finds a newspaper article. It happens to be the newspaper article that reveals the prince's real identity. Todd quickly leaves with it before the owner of the hotel gets back. After their romantic date, the prince takes her home and when they're about to seal the romantic date with a kiss, Alice shows up and she's not happy with the prince. She insists there's something important she has to know. Emma's surprised but decides to find out what the issue is. The prince is also surprised at Alice's sudden change of behavior. Emma and Prince Duncan wish each other good night. The romantic date does not end as expected. Later, Emma is surprised to see Todd in her house and angrily wants him to leave. But Alice insists she listens to him. Todd reveals the real identity of Prince Duncan to her, and how he will be getting married in a few days. Emma is heartbroken. But even if Prince Duncan lied about his identity, she believes he's better than Todd who's full of himself. She orders Todd to leave her house. On his way out, he still desperately reminds her of the imposed Christmas promise. Alice tries to console her while blaming herself for persuading her sister to give love another chance. In the next scene, Prince Duncan visits Emma, unbeknownst to him she's aware of his little secret. She reveals she's aware of his real identity and his upcoming marriage. Prince Duncan apologizes for not being truthful, and explains that he's in Aurora to escape the arranged marriage. He reveals he's in love with her, but could not bring himself to let her know. Emma, who's heartbroken, feels like he's using her to get over his arranged marriage. He tries to make her understand that if she's aware of his status, she will not treat him as a normal person. She finds it hard to believe him, even though she's also in love with him. She reveals that there are two men in her life, and sadly, the honest one turns out to be Todd. Angry about everything, she tells him to leave. On his way out, he wishes Max luck in his culinary school journey. While Prince Duncan packs his luggage and as he sets out to return home, memories of the time spent together with Emma flood his memory. He wishes they did not end things in a sour way. Jeffrey finally shows up, revealing he has been around for a while, and he's aware of his current circumstances. He also tries to encourage him and reveal that the king has been very supportive. Jeffrey believes it's time for him to come back home. Left with no choice, the prince admits it is indeed time. As Prince Duncan leaves with Jeffrey, Emma sees them from afar, and deep down she is not happy with their situation. But she does not stop him from leaving. In the next scene, the prince is finally home and the queen is delighted because the wedding is back on track, even though they have lost some of their important guests. She wonders how his trip went, and hopes he's willing to share what happened with them. They're also surprised to see him changed. He has become more humble and wants to treat all their helpers as equals. His mother feels it is a bad idea, and wants him to start acting like royalty. The prince tries to persuade them, sharing his experience at Aurora with them. He talks about how the people treat each other with respect. He also reveals that he's in love with a lady named Emma. His father supports him and hopes his mother does too. Seeing his demeanor, his mother finally realizes that her son is feeling genuine love for someone. So, finally, they encourage him to pursue her. His mother promises to end his arranged marriage quietly. Prince Duncan is overjoyed. On Christmas Eve, Alice joins her sister Emma at the diner and tries to make her feel better. Emma reveals she's in love with Prince Duncan, and that's why she finds it hard to let go. Alice reminds her of their plan to visit the train station to get her bouquets for Christmas. While waiting for the train to arrive, Alice gets her bouquets. They're beautiful and she believes her customers will like them. Surprisingly, Prince Duncan arrives. Alice sees him as he gets off the train with Jeffrey. Alice calls Emma's attention to them and this time around, the prince is dressed in his royal attire. He approaches her and reveals that he's in Aurora to see her, because he's in love with her. He believes she feels the same way too. Emma wants to decline, thinking about her sister, but Alice encourages her to accept him. Finally, he proposes and she accepts him. They kiss each other romantically. Alice and Jeffrey are delighted. Max is also there and he's glad to see them make up. Eventually, after graduation from the culinary school, Max converts Emma's family diner into a big restaurant. Alice is able to attend State College on a music scholarship and later moves to Europe to play with the Philharmonic Orchestra. Todd, on the other side, finds happiness with another lady. Emma and Duncan continue to arrange their royal wedding while traveling, fulfilling Emma's longtime dream. 